So we did our Q&A yesterday, and then uh, you guys were going to go up to watch this show. And with the exception of a protein shake, I had not had a meal in 24 hours. Wow. And so I went to eat, and I was eating while you watched the opener. And so then I got a text from old Corey here who tells me, Gunther and Sheamus was so awesome. That match was awesome. We're going to wait till you get here. We're going to watch it again. We watched it again. So I came back up, and you guys watched this match again. And this match was so great. And I knew it would be great because it's Gunther and Sheamus. I did not think it was going to be this great. Neither did I. These dudes beat the shit out of each other. And what I actually really liked about the match was it was a, it was a Valter match against Sheamus. And Sheamus was ready to go. He was ready to fight. And, you know, they did all of the basic, they did brawling, hard hitting, nothing fancy, but they just pummeled each other. And near the end, uh, Gunther goes for a power bomb. And, uh, God, this was the worst bump. He oh, lifts his dude up and he power bombed him right on his tailbone, which is, is pretty much the worst way to take this move. The only way it can be worse is if you if you land on your tailbone and then you also bang your head on the mat, but he drops him right on his tailbone. And Corey tried to play it up like, uh, I forget what he said, but he was trying to downplay it like, oh, he didn't get all of it or whatever. That's what he said. Yeah, but he actually did get all of it. It was worse. <laughs> but to their credit, Sheamus then starts selling his low back. Yeah. Which played into the match later. And, you know, finally they hit another power bomb and he kicked out of that. And then Gunther stood up and he just killed this guy with a lariat and he pinned him. This match was awesome. This one, the fans loved it. They loved Sheamus. They went crazy for this match. It was it was one of the best WWE matches in years, actually. Oh, I would say in history. I mean, yeah. as far as I mean, not including NXT. I think there have been better NXT matches, but not and not a ton of those either. But I thought this was one of the better. I mean, to, to me, this year, this one and uh, Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes are the two best main roster matches this year. And I will say, because, you know, a lot of people are really down on Triple H and they don't want to see that it's getting better and they don't want, you know, the main event's proof that he's horrible, this and that. But the fact of the matter is, there were a lot of matches that we saw in the last six years where there would be two guys that would be in NXT, then they would go to the main roster, they would do a match on the main roster, and what would we say? There's this nothing. match would have been 50 times better in NXT. Yeah. And this is a match that would not have been 50 times been better than NXT because the they let them do an NXT, an old NXT-style match on the main roster. Well, I mean, the thing in this, that it's not even old NXT style. This is really, really more of like, because Walter did this same stuff in PWG. Yeah, he did, but they if Vince were in charge, I don't think they would have done a match like this. You, I don't even know if they would have done this match. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. But the one thing is, is like, again, when you have a pay-per-view, I think that you want, the one of the, flaws of wwe is that we have a playbook it's like you know like you know levesque would say we have a playbook and you have to learn our playbook whether it's the best playbook or not we can all argue but we have a playbook and the problem is is that then when you do that you have this mentality where everybody wrestles a certain way and you know if you have a three-hour television show of matches with all similar rhythms and patterns um and vince used to talk about rhythm you know, I mean, Vince is like, the match has to have this rhythm. And that, and Eddie Guerrero was the one who used to fight over that with the idea that, why does it have to be this rhythm? You know what I mean? It can be, there's more than one way to do it right. And, but Vince only wanted that one way. And the thing with this is, this match was com completely different from every other match on the show. This was not a Vince rhythm match. No, no. This was, uh, this was a, 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 you know, a Walter match. The way he would do it with, whether it was Ilya Dragunov in Austria or whether he would do it with Zach or everybody in PWG, it's the same style match that works, and it worked great here because Sheamus was coming right back at him. You know, it was that... You know, it's kind of like a Suzuki Ishii, except in front of 60,000 people, so it was... Um, it kind of magnifies it, but yeah, it was... Um, it was it, what was good was it was different from every match on the show and it was different from a normal WWE match. They also brought back Giovanni Vinci before the match started, so Imperium is back together, which is, I believe, a much better role for Giovanni Vinci. Well, I mean, the one thing is, is that with this feud, you know, you've got three guys on one side and you had two on the other, so when you had that, you know, um, brawl thing that they had, you know, it was very awkward because 
um, you know, Sheamus and, and Gunther are in the ring standing there, and then the other four, or the other three are fighting, but there's only Kaiser, and he f- has to fight off with Butch and Holland, and it just looked awkward, so they needed that third guy. Actually, they needed that third guy for a couple of weeks ago, and maybe they saw that and saw how awkward that was, and, you know, again, I think it was Vince's call when he did the bring up that, hey, I don't... I don't want that guy for whatever reason. I don't know, and I couldn't give you a good reason because Vinci's good. So anyway, they're they're back together, and um, and it's yeah for the better. I mean, so my gut is that we're going to be getting a bunch of six man tags out of this program, and probably you know you could do a rematch at some point. I think everybody would really be up for a rematch when the time is right. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.